Hey everyone, it's Desiree, and I am here with a blog hop for Spellbinders featuring the Hello Summer collection. Now the collection that I will be featuring is from the Splash Zone collection by Fun Stampers Journey. So with this collection, I made three cards, so let's get started. One of the items that's in the collection is absolutely adorable, and it is a mermaid tail. So what I did was um, die cut it from different colors of cardstock. Now I chose the cooler colors, so in shades of a blue and purples and a bright fuchsia. And now I'm just playing with the placement of uh, the tails. How would they look? So they would, to show different ways they look great being laid out, I wanted to layer them. So almost, almost like a shadow effect, so to speak, um, I guess. So I'm going to layer these on top of each other and I'm only putting glue in a certain spot, but I want them to have that shadow of each of the colors. So I'm just putting glue around the one edge and along the top. Um, this way, when it sits on the card, it, it actually fans up on the tail. It, you'll see when it's, it's done, but it looks kind of cool. Um, but I'm just continuing to layer those so that you almost get this rainbow effect of that tail coming through. Now I'm not quite sure how it will be positioned on my card yet, but I also knew that I wanted something for my background. Um, so I grabbed my craft mat and I grabbed a couple colors of my Distress Oxides and I grabbed a tumbled glass and I believe broken china. I believe those are the two colors that I use there. And I'm just doing my ink smushing. So on my first layer, I'm making sure that it's dry. I'm using my heat tool, uh, my Ranger heat tool. And then I'm gonna come in and just pick up some of those droplets. Once I know my card is flattened a little bit by rolling it, and now you can see I have those bubbles. Um, I'm sorry, it's Tumbled Glass and Lagoon. That's the color that I use, Mermaid Lagoon. Fitting, right? All right. Then I'm coming in with their Color Burst. Now, this is really cool. Um, it's like an ink, and I'm adding a little bit of water to it. Um, and I'm just going to splatter some of that green throughout at, as well. Now, this dries very quickly um, onto the card, but it just gives it a little bit, of, a little bit more texture. Um, and a little bit more interest with that green shade coming in. That's how I decided to put my tail on my background. And then from the stamp set, it's called Make Waves. I'm going to use the sentiment, Make Waves, yes. I'm using one of the scrap pieces that I used for the mermaid's tail, and I'm going to, um, heat emboss that and I'm using my VersaFine ink and my Alabaster White Fine Detail to make that stand out. Now this does, the stamp set Make Waves does also have a die and there is a die that is for this sentiment. I'm coming in with a dry brush just to clean out the little strays that I always have even though I use my anti-static powder tool. I always have a few strays. And once that heat set, I'm going to die cut that out. <clears throat> so you can see it just goes right around the sentiment really well. And I'm gonna have that sit down on the bottom. Now that looks kind of cool too, the way that's sitting. I'm gonna use my standard A2 size card base, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm going to first unclog my glue applicator because I didn't put the pin back in. And it's going to be a top folding. Well, this is actually gonna be a side folding card. It's usually a top folding. 
Once my panel is set in place, I'm then going to apply glue. And for this bottom layer, I am going to put glue all over, <clears throat> excuse me, that bottom layer, because I want that to be secured on my card. But as I said, what's really cool is those other layers just pop off. So it gives it some dimension um, when it comes to the tail, which I thought was really different. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on the upper layers just so that they are adhered up in the upper left hand corner and use some acrylic blocks just to make sure that does stick down. I'm going to cut down some double sided foam squares so that I can prop up my sentiment just to give that, <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit of dimension as well. Now what also fun uh, Stamper's Journey have has is called um, it looks like it's in a nail polish bottle and it's called Sparkle Silk. I think this is one of my newfound friends um, in this collection or in, in the product line. So wait till you see that. And then part of the splash zone is this large pot of uh, sequin mix. So there's stars, of course there's sequins, there's some shells. And I really like to prop the shells up um, with some double-sided foam tape so that I can also then tuck that underneath the sentiment as well. I'm going to load this up with a lot of the different colors because I think it pulls the colors that I used in the cardstock, which was not planned, I have to admit, um, just all over just to give it some sparkle and shine. You'll also see <clears throat> this is where you have to really shake this up every time and I'm just going to paint over the tail and this gives so much glitter and I'm just feathering it up onto the tail so once it comes up to the main part on the left there's none but as you come down to the tail there's so much more. So for my next project, you can tell I've already colored my image and I used alcohol markers for the flesh and then I used my colored pencils from Fun Stamper's Journey for her hair and the rock and the mermaid outfit itself. The stencil that I'm using is called, excuse me, <clears throat> Splash Zone and it's beautiful waves. So I'm starting out with some tumbled glass and I'm using my makeup brush and I'm going to use that as my first layer. So I'm using that heavily towards the bottom and then I'm going to get lighter and fan that out as we get towards the top of the card. Before taking, I was going to take that off and just let that there, but I wanted it to be just a little bit darker. And to clean off my makeup brush, I just use a paper towel. I'm now going to come in with my mermaid because, again, I just wanted the base of it um, to be a little darker so I could have more of a, a variegated look. And I'm just going to fan that up onto the card. I'm going to use a baby wipe just to moisten the bristles just to make them damp and then go on to my paper towel to clean my makeup brush up. I'm going to remove the stencil and we have a beautiful image uh, with waves going up the card and she will actually rest on top of that. I'm then going to come in, I chose a piece of cardstock and I believe <clears throat> Fun Stamper's Journey has some beautiful colors um, of cardstock and the ones that I'll be using throughout this are Sweet Berry, Grape Fusion, Catalina Splash, Cool Pool, and Whip Cream. I just love the names. It's awesome. Um, and I believe this I'm going to cut down to be approximately one inch 
and I'm going to stamp my sentiment. And the sentiment I chose is live in the sunshine, swim in the sea, drink the wild air. I thought that was really pretty. I'm going to use my Versamark ink again and my alabaster white detail embossing powder and I will heat set that. And then once that that's heat set, I'm going to be playing with the placement. I wasn't quite sure where that sentiment was going to sit, but I do know that I wanted it to go across the card and I thought this color matched perfectly um, with my backgrounds. So I'm just putting little pencil marks once I know where my sentiment strip is going to sit and I'm going to prop that up using some double-sided foam squares and then set that in place and then she will sit on top of that. So I'll have double-sided double -sided foam squares on the top and the bottom of her. I'm going to use my um, Grand Pro Shears to trim that and then place my foam squares just so that it can be straddled over that banner strip with my sentiment. And then once that's in place, had to grab those sequins again and I wanted to use, I was digging in the pot <laughs> of the sequins because I really wanted all of those uh, shells and I'm just using some small foam squares to put behind them and I want them to come out from around her and then I will add one to accent her headpiece and of course I have to have an odd number so there's going to be a total of five shells that'll be placed around her. This is a really fun collection. Now there is also another collection um, that is part of this um, and it's a lot of fun. I'm actually looking for the for the name and of course I can't find it. Nope. Okay. But I will definitely have that linked below as well. So I'm setting one of the stars first and then I'm going to have a sequin that just sits on top. Again, I will be using a standard A2 size card base to place my panel on top of. Now this panel was cut to be four and a quarter by five and a half so it will cover the entire front of my card base. I will be using my liquid adhesive to set this down on top. And then of course by me doing that I shifted her headpiece but I was able to put that in place. This time I'm using excuse me this sparkle silk and I'm actually splattering it. Um, like I would with a brush and it worked beautifully. For my last card, what's also part of this um, kit is a luminous alphabet set and they are dimensional. So we're going to make a shaker card. So I used one of my hem stitch rectangles without the little dots cut out to cut out my panel. And once that was cut out, I'm now coming in with my tumbled glass and using my makeup brush again and I'm going to put that in the bottom right hand corner and the upper left hand corner <clears throat> to make it look like a cloud that's going to come in. Once I have the darkness that I'm looking for in the corner I'm then going to use that stencil and it's called Bubble Bubble. Um, so I just thought it would be great just to make it look like it's a bunch of bubbles and for that I will come in with my Mermaid Lagoon to again just put some bubbles that are coming through this. I'll use some painter's tape to adhere this down while I use the stencil. This way my cardstock won't shift. 
I'm also going to put in place the piece that I cut out just so that there's something that the ink in case I go up comes into. And again, I'm just putting a lot down in the corner and making sure the variegate, it, I, it gives me a variegated look of the color. And you can see it gives a great texture and effect uh, with those bubbles. That'd be great too for like a skin, you know, like a cute character. Just saying. So once my surface is clean, now we're going to start building our shaker. So I'm going to grab a piece of acetate that's been cut down to size, use my liquid adhesive to glue that in place. I always like to keep the piece of tissue paper there so that I don't get fingerprints. Once I know it's set, I can remove that and then I'll start setting up my double-sided foam tape and I'm going to cut that down and set that along my card. You always want to make sure in a shaker card that you do have the area where the sequins or your bits, whatever you're putting in there, are secured so you want to make sure they all connect. I'm going to come in with my tumbled glass again and also my mermaid and just to create a background I will heat set that first and then I'll go back in once that's dry to get some of the dots. I love the dots just to get that uh, foam effect so to speak. And once that's dry that's going to be our backdrop. I'm just going to trim that down too because that's going to be my back panel but I don't want it to overextend and I'm using the piece that I cut out on my prior cardstock so that I can draw a line around it so I know where I'm going to put my letters and the word that I want to spell out is shine. So I'm just going to set those now they don't get adhered unless you press them down and now I'm just playing with the, the position of them. I was going to have them staggered. Then I'm like, no, let's put them close together. <clears throat> so I do have them just a little bit, but not so dramatic. Now I'm going to press those in place and then cut my panel down. Now to do this, because I've set this, I want to make sure that I take my shaker bits I'm going to erase my lines first because I know I'll be off center because that'll happen and I don't want to see the pencil line. So I'm able to erase those away. So for the shaker bits for this to make sure that I have it placed, I'm going to place them on top of the shine um, and then set my piece on top of that. I want to make sure that the shells are down below so that they stay below the letters. I put the sequin mix in a tri in one of my triangle trays there so that it was easier to pour and then I'm just going to make sure that they're placed there. I'm going to remove the release paper of my double-sided foam tape and then set that right on top and I did go a little bit off to one side and that's okay. It just means that it's off to the side. Now, you could simply leave the shine as your sentiment, but of course I can't do that. So I do add another one. I'm just having way too much fun playing with um, the shaking of the card because who doesn't do that after we make a shaker card? We just sit there and shake it all the time just to see how everything goes. I'm now gonna come in with my sentiment that says it's okay to be different and that is from the Be Different stamp set and there are dies available for this as well and I just loved the characters um, in this stamp set. Um, these The animals are just adorable and then they have these cute prints of either a floral print um, or something like that so I did choose um, one of my Gina K inks um, in Wild Wisteria and it does dry back. It looks really bright um, but it actually is a lighter shade than the cardstock 
that I'm using, um, which is Grape Fusion. Um, I do fussy cut this out. Um, they are very easy um, to cut out. Simple lines, nothing intricate because I'm not a great fussy cutter. This was a little tedious, cutting that out. Um, but I just continue around. As I said, it is very easy to fussy cut around these images. And then once that's fussy cut, I'm going to put that to the bottom right hand corner of my shaker panel. And then I will set my um, sentiment just underneath that as well. And I do like the sentiment. It is okay to be different. Um, makes us unique with what we do. I'm just going to cut a rectangle from the sentiment and I'm going to use one of my microfiber cloths to clean that off. And I'm just going to use my scissors to trim that down. It took me a while to play with the placement here though. Um, I do set a banner in here, but as you can see, I do change my mind or you will see that I changed my mind on that also. So I'm going to trim that up and it just ends up being a rectangle. I was thinking it could come off of the tail, but I did want that image to be right there. And finally I gave up and I set that on the right hand side. I also used my double sided foam squares <clears throat> to prop that up. And then I also use some double sided foam squares to prop up my image as well. And that is our final card. So I do hope that you will enjoy this um, or enjoy these projects from the Hello Summer collection. Again, I used items from the Splash Zone collection by Fun Stampers Journey. And you know, I always have to say the best, save the best part for last. One, make sure you follow along in the blog hop. I'm sure there's going to be, matter of fact, I know there is going to be some wonderful creations by the other crafters as part of this. But also the best part to celebrate this release, Spellbinders is giving away a $50 gift certificate to one lucky blog reader. If that winner is going to be selected from the comments across all of the blogs that are going to be within this hop. Know that this giveaway is going to close on Monday, July 1st at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time. The winners will be announced in their blog hop post on the following Tuesday. Just remember, you are responsible, if you're the lucky winner, for the shipping cost, duties, and taxes, depending upon where you are. So all of the products I used will be listed, delisted down below in the video description. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Again, I hope you enjoy this and thank you so much for stopping by today, spending a little bit of time with me and spend time with others. If you haven't already, I'd love for you to subscribe. Make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss the next video. I hope everyone's having a great day. Remember, take care and always remember, be creative.